So the first time that I had a miscarriage was my third pregnancy. It was the first one that my husband Ryan and I had together. I had two older kids from my first marriage uh, and they had gone to their dads for the weekend and uh, we had been about 11 weeks pregnant. And a couple of days before, we were so excited to announce our pregnancy to everyone. We took photos of Chase and Mackenzie, my older two kids, holding this big poster that they made that said, we're having a baby. And we printed those pictures out and then we framed them in some frames and our we invited our parents over for dinner and and we gave them their presents during dinner where they opened it up and we all celebrated with this baby news that was so exciting the kids they had gone to their dads that friday night and ryan and i and we had gone and gotten a red box movie and we were going to sit down in our basement and just sort of watch it together but then all of a sudden uh there was blood there was blood and so today on the daily dose we're going to talk very honestly about miscarriage and infertility and where you're going through uh if you're going through those things or if you're watching someone that you love go through them where god is and how you can walk with them through it So Ryan and I, we jumped in the car and we rushed towards the hospital. It was really one of the only few times in our whole marriage when I can remember seeing my husband, who's normally a calm and collected man, completely and utterly panicked. We rushed into the emergency room and they brought in an ultrasound machine and, and they put it on my belly and they said, you know, I'm sorry, but there, there's no heartbeat. Uh, 11 weeks along for that one. The tears were flowing and we headed home and we, we didn't quite know what to expect. We were supposed to see our doctor that next Monday morning. The weekend was terrible. It was terrible. I cried every minute of the entire weekend. And Ryan, Ryan didn't know how to help me. He was super kind and like kind of over-functioned to try and take care of me as I was experiencing this physical miscarriage. And, and, and the truth was, I didn't know how to ask him for help. I didn't know exactly what I needed. All I felt was this deep, deep pain and grief inside of me. I, I was nervous because now we had to untell people that we had told about this pregnancy. We had to call our parents. I didn't know how I was going to tell my kids on Monday morning when they came home uh, from their dads. I didn't know how to tell them about this great big huge loss that we experienced over this weekend. Now the thing about uh, miscarriages is that it's a really strange grief. If you've ever experienced it or you know somebody who is, it's this grief, but it's like a grief of hope. It's a grief of a life that didn't get a chance to live outside of mom. In many ways, it's what we call a disenfranchised grief. It's a grief without any real acknowledgement of that grief. When you miscarry, there's no obituary, there's no grave, there's no flood of cards that comes in telling you how wonderful that was. You don't get time off of work. In fact, after that first one, I started on Friday. I went to work that Sunday morning um, and tried to carry on like everything was just fine because I didn't even have any time to get off. And the reality is, is that through a miscarriage, often both parents feel really differently about it. There's the one that carries the pregnancy and they have to adjust physically, physically, hormonally, emotionally, in a way that the other parent doesn't have to kind of experience, but it's still a huge loss for that other parent too. Sometimes that other parent doesn't quite feel as attached as the person who's carrying that pregnancy, but there is no physicality. So it's got this real complicated kind of layer. And we're in a culture that doesn't talk about pregnancy loss much. We don't talk a lot about miscarriage. And I fortunately think that that's changed a lot in the last 20 years. But when I lost that first one, I didn't know a single person who had ever experienced a miscarriage. And as I shared my story, because I had to untell the people that I had told about my pregnancy, as I shared my story uh, of losing it, I got to hear story after story for some of them and so some of the women that I talked to, I think it was their first time actually ever reflecting on it. It's like a lot of times these things, they happen behind closed doors. And, and often because it's so behind closed doors, there ends up with this sense of shame and guilt uh, for the mother. Uh, I felt like it was my fault. I mean, I felt like I had must have done something wrong. And so I combed through all the weeks of my pregnancy to figure out what it was that I did wrong. Was it, was it that Diet Coke that I drank that I knew I probably shouldn't, but I told myself it was going to be fine? Or was it that my seatbelt was too tight in my car? Or, or what was it? Uh, was it because I went out for a run or I overexercised? Did I put too much stress on the pregnancy, which caused me to lose it? 
Now, I think that we do this during a miscarriage because it's often so hard for us to figure out why this thing has happened to us. It's so far out of our control that we look for anything. We look for anything that can give us back some more control. If I can at least control like my diet or my exercise or those things, then maybe I can have something to blame. Maybe I can understand the why. But the truth is, there is no why. Sometimes people will try and console you by trying to give you a why, like platitudes like, uh, well, God just wanted this one, or, well, you know, you'll have another baby that will be the one that's meant to be, or, uh, well, there must have been something wrong with it. Like somehow those kind of whys give us some more sense of control, when really in this, there is no why. There's no why. And well-meaning people try and say these things to try and comfort the grieving person, uh, but in reality, this is just a thing that happens. It's a thing that happens with no why, and it's really, really hard. And it's really hard when, uh, for us as people to not have a why when something so tragic happens. Now, my experience of miscarriage, uh, I ended up with four miscarriages. My experiences of miscarriage were one of the toughest things that I've ever experienced in my life because it's complicated and it has so many unexpected turns and levels and it's not something that people really talk about a whole lot. And that's one of the reasons I wanna to talk to you all about it here today. If you know somebody who is experiencing pregnancy loss, uh, uh, my encouragement for you would be to just listen. Just listen and love them and offer them like some comfy pajamas or a meal, but understand that they're gonna grieve in a very different kind of unique way. And, and so is their partner. They're both in it together, but it's really hard um, through all of those layers. It's real, real grief, uh, even though we don't have that obituary or that body right there. Uh, Psalm 34 says it like this. It says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. If you're experiencing miscarriage, uh, I want to encourage you that God has got you in it. And if you're mad at God, it is okay because God is big enough that God can take your anger here in this moment. God is close to the brokenhearted. God is close to you. I want you to imagine if you're in it right now that God is right there holding you in your arms, even if you're fighting God back. And that is okay because God comes close during those times of trouble. And if you need support for a miscarriage, you're not alone. Give me a call here at the church. I want you to know that you're not in this by yourself. We're all in this together.